This presentation is for Dr. Hyatt's Math 6332 Combinatorics Summer 1 2016. I'll be presenting a problem from Chapter 14, Problem Number 4. First, a little bit of notation. Here's a notation for the graph G with V vertices and E edges. Here's an example of such a graph with 7 vertices and 9 edges. Now let's say that we're given two such graphs. We'll let G1 be a graph with V vertices and E1 edges. And we'll let G2 be a graph with the same number of vertices, but maybe a different number of edges. We can use these two graphs to construct a new graph, namely G1 union G2. This graph has V vertices and the union of the two graphs for edges. To see how to construct such a graph, let's look at a quick example. Let's consider the case of five vertices. We'll let G1 be a graph with five edges connecting all the vertices in a cycle. And we'll let the graph G2 be a tree with highest degree 3. Then the union of G1, G2 will be the union of these two graphs. It will have all the edges from G1 as well as all the edges from G2. And where they overlap, we'll just consider it as a single edge. So this graph is fairly easy to construct, and we would like to prove two interesting points about our new graph. Before we begin, we'll need one more definition, that of vertex coloring. The vertices in a graph can be colored different colors. We'll define psi g as the minimum number of colors needed to color the vertices of a graph g such that none of the vertices of the same color share an edge. Here's an example of a cycle on ver six vertices where the vertices have been colored red and blue and you see no edge has two vertices of the same color or no two vertices of the same color share an edge. Now certainly this graph can be colored in more colors than just two. We could use six colors and color each vertex a different color but this two is the minimum colors required to color this graph under these conditions. Now let's find the minimum number of colors required for the graphs in our example. For G1, the minimum number of colors required is 3, since it's a cycle on an odd number of vertices. For G2, the tree graph, the minimum number of colors required is 2. And for the new graph that we came up with, G1 union G2, the minimum number of colors required is also 3. Now we would like to show that given any three graphs, G1, G2, and the new graph that we made, G1 union G2, that the minimum number of colors required to color the union graph is always less than the product of the colors required for the other two graphs. Let's see how this works out for our example. The minimum colors for the union graph was 3. And the minimum colors for the other two graphs, G1 and G2, have a product of 6. And 3 is less than the product 6. So it seems to work for our example, but we would like to show that it works in For general. our proof, we can use proof by contradiction. Now let's suppose that the minimum coloring of the union is actually greater than the product of the minimum colors of the other two graphs. And that's exactly opposite of what we really wanted to show, but if we can find a contradiction here, then we can say it's not greater and thus it must be less or equal to. So we must choose the graphs G1 and G2. But we can really be free to choose whichever graphs we want, so before we do that, let's look at an interesting result from chapter 11. For any graph G, we define the complement of G to be the graph that has all of the edges that weren't included in the original graph. So here, G complement between these two vertices includes this edge that was not originally in G. And we, will, we know, we proved, and we will accept this fact for now, that the minimum coloring for G multiplied by the minimum coloring of its complement is greater than the total number of vertices. And that could be very useful to us. Using this result, let's choose the graph G1 to be the graph G. And let's choose G2 to be the complement of G. And as long as this inequality works for these two graphs, we'll be fine. Now then, psi G, the union of the two graphs, is greater than the product of their individual colorings, which, using our result, is greater than the number of vertices. So that's to say that the union, the minimum coloring of the union graph is greater than the number of vertices, or we need to use more colors than we have vertices. Now, let's think about what we've just said. If we think of any graph, G, even the most connected graph, like the one shown here, on five vertices, 
the minimum number of colors is always less than the number of vertices because the maximum case could occur if we just chose to color each vertex a different color. But that would be still only equal to the number of vertices and never greater than. So we've shown that the number, the minimum coloring has to be greater than the number of vertices. But we know that the minimum coloring can't be greater. It must be less than or equal to the number of vertices. So there is a contradiction. And thus, the, union, the coloring of the union must not have been greater. It must be less than or equal to the product. Now we would like to show one more result using our same graphs, G and G complement. If G is any graph whose complement is planar, and planar means that it can be drawn on a flat surface without any edges overlapping. Then the minimum coloring for our graph G is greater than one fifth of the total number of vertices. Now, how can we use this? We can use the result from the last proof. The fact that the minimum coloring for G times the minimum coloring of its complement is greater than the number of vertices. We can start there. By a little bit of rearrangement, we can conclude that the minimum coloring of G is greater than the number of vertices divided by the minimum coloring for the complement. Now we will need one more useful theorem, and that theorem comes from this chapter. It deals with planar graphs. For any planar map that we have shown here, we can rewrite this map as a vertex colored graph G. And then we know that we can vertex color this graph in at most five colors. So if G is planar, or one of these planar maps, we can vertex color G in less than or equal to five colors. Now this will come in handy for us since our graph G complement is planar. We can use this result to say that the minimum coloring of G complement is less than five, or more importantly, that one over the minimum coloring is greater than one fifth. Substituting that into our original relation yields exactly what we're trying to show. That was easy. This concludes the presentation. I hope you have a continuous, differentiable day.